And as we drift along playing, because I say we've never had so much entertainment and data thrown at us so cheaply as t- today, even though everyone's losing their homes, they can always still watch all the cheap stuff on television or the computer. Um, we find that there's executive orders just flowing out of the White House and no one cares about it. Centralization of government, remember. And Obama, just uh, I think it was yesterday, uh, out of the White House came a press release, uh, whitehouse.gov. It uh, says here, January 11th, it says, President Obama signs executive order establishing a council of governors, a council of governors, C-O-G, COG. <laughs> but it says executive order will strengthen further partnerships. See, it's not a takeover or a merger of Big Brother. It's, it's a, a partnership. It's like that word harmonization when they bring things. We're harmonizing your taxes with other taxes. It's harmony. That sounds good. We're all sing in unison, doesn't it? Harmony is a good word. But this is a partnership. Partnerships are good, right? Again, psycholinguistics, you see. So strengthen uh, and further partnership between the federal states and local governments to better protect. They always use that one. Our nation. Protect. Protect is a good word, isn't it? The president today signed an executive order, order attached, and I'll put these links up on my site at the end of the show, establishing a, governor, a council of governors to strengthen further the partnership between the federal government and state governments to protect our nation against all types of hazards. When appointed, the council will be reviewing such matters involving the National Guard of the various states while they're centralizing all the military at home because trouble is coming along, if you can't quite get the message and reason for it. Homeland defense, civil support, synchronization and integration, integration of state and federal military activities in the United States. Let's put that again, me. Uh, synchronization and integration of state and federal military activities in the United States. And we'll be back with more on this order after this break. through the Matrix reading an executive order uh, that Obama has just put through and it's to do with basically a council of governors being uh, uh, erected to basically take care of all problems at home obviously they don't say problems at home but since it's all to do with home and mil- military activities in the United States that they're expecting something big and that's what it really is that's what it is something big is going to happen it says federal members of the council include the Secretary of Defense, the Secretary of Homeland Security, the Assistant to the President for Homeland Security and Counterterrorism, the Assistant to the President for Intergovernmental Affairs and Public Engagement, the Assistant Secretary of Defense for Homeland Defense and America's Security Affairs, the U.S. Northern Command Commander, the Commandant of the Coast Guard and the Chief of the National Guard Bureau. The Secretary of Defense will designate an executive director for the council. It's like the whole kitten caboodle is in there. And something big will come up. We've watched all this crisis creation. We've watched all this con games with the sinking of the banks who then got paid for doing it. And the taxation of the public is still to follow. It hasn't hit uh, the prices just yet. Not, not completely. It's just starting to, you're starting to see the inflation. But uh, big trouble is coming. Big, big, big trouble is coming. And it was planned that way a long time ago. Every scenario that could happen, even by accident, is practiced over and over in simulations years ago, over and over again. But nothing is happening by accident at all. Nothing. And when they went into Iraq, remember, I said at the time, I, I, apart from the farce of it all, they wanted an excuse to go in. They already had the military mast ready to go in before the 9-11 attack came on, long before it, before the, the Twin Towers even went down. They had, they had planned to go into Iraq. And uh, they were still really uh, putting it under sanction at that time with flyovers and no flyovers and all that kind of stuff with the, through the so-called UN and NATO forces. But 
um, but then we had the big push to go in, uh, and uh, and Bush said at the time openly that he believed that Saddam was uh, supporting the guys, the terrorists, who took down the towers. Afterwards, he denied that when he was doing the inquiry. Remember, he said, I never did say that at all. He said, I never ever said Saddam had anything to do with taking down the towers. But that's what politicians are paid for, you know. Uh, this article here is from the Mail Online, and it says, 12th of January 2010, invasion of Iraq had no legal basis, finds damning Dutch report into war. The Dutch government supported an invasion of Iraq that had no legal mandate. The country's inquiry into the war announced today. The scathing 551-page report said United Nations resolutions in the 1990s prior to the outbreak of war gave no authority to the United States and Britain to invade Iraq. And it said that the Netherlands gave political support to the war just so it could support its NATO allies and the US and Britain who led the invasion. Dutch ministers as politicians were further criticised in reports of the Davids Commission, which sat for 10 months for using intelligence from Britain and the US that showed Iraq had weapons of mass destruction rather than the more nuanced assessment of its own secret services, which knew, of course they knew they had no weapons of mass destruction. And it heavily criticised the Dutch government for letting politics override law when it supported the 2003 US invasion of Iraq and ignoring intelligence that downplayed the threat of Saddam Hussein's weapons program. And when we jump from there to the next article, and it's from, it's from the Mail Online, uh, it's about the same thing only from Britain, right? Because the little inquiry is going on there too. And it says here, shameless, unrepentant, and still lying, Alistair Campbell stands by every word of 45-minute dodgy dossier that took us to war with Iraq, 12th of January 2010. Alistair Campbell, he was in charge of it all at the time, was accused last night of peddling a shameless litany of lies at the Iraq inquiry. In a provocative six-hour display, the spin doctor denied doing anything to beef up the case for going to war. Actually, he told everybody beneath him to sex up the dossier. Sex it up, that was the words he used. And he dismissed the overwhelming evidence of government papers and his own diaries that he pressured spy chiefs to harden Tony Blair's dodgy dossier on Iraqi weapons. He put, he put Sir John Scarlett, the former chairman of the Joint Intelligence Committee, in the dock over the dossier, saying he held the pen. Yet Mr. Campbell's own diary showed that he bombarded Sir John with at least 15 suggestions on how to improve the dossier, which led to assessments of Saddam's nuclear weapons program becoming more alarmist. In other words, it was outright lies they knew. Yet he insisted yesterday not a single one of his team sought to question, override, rewrite, let alone the ghastly sex up phrase, intelligence assessments in any way, at any time, on any level. The former number 10 communications chief then defied critics of the war by insisting he was very, very proud of his role as a good psychopath, you see, and made clear that Tony Blair will do the same because he's a good psychopath too when he testifies later this month. He added, I defend every single word of the dossier. I defend every single part of the process. It sounds like Nuremberg trial. That's what they all said there too, you know, some sort of stuff. That's what psychopaths do. You know, they'll lie to the bitter end to save their own ego. No matter what they've done or who's been slaughtered, it doesn't matter. It's all irrelevant to them. It really is. And remember, that means we are also completely irrelevant as well. We better get that through our thick skulls very quickly. Big things are planned, you know, big, big things are planned for the world. We're just going through some of them right now. Bigger ones are to come. Back with more after this break. Hi, folks. This is Alan Watt. We're cutting through the matrix. And jumping back to Karl Marx and Lincoln, uh, just put that in context with Obama's executive order and his further centralization of power. That's the whole point I'm trying to make you think about. Very, very important points. And not only that, you see these treaties they have through the UN and NATO and all the rest of it, that's further centralization of power over the planet. They don't say, what will we do next once we centralize? No, they already know where they're going next and next and next for the next 50 to 100 years. They really do. But when you have unlimited budgets, 
and countless think tanks paid full time, generation after generation, on particular areas of, of humanity and society. How can they go wrong, eh? How can they go wrong? Especially when they've, they've trained an obedient, docile public to just obey, obey, and believe, and play, and keep playing, play, 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 be entertained and play. Uh, they got it made. They got it made. As the cage is being put around everyone, they got it made. <laughs>